Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Plays the Binding of Isaac After Birth Plus. Here we are. Five wins in a row, a little bit smoother on the last one. We, had, we didn't need as much chaos energy, but we might need it on this one. P428 MTF6. Uh, you know what? On a run like this, first off, you ditch Slow Worm immediately. And if I could ditch that haircut, I would do that as well. You gotta use TNT to fish. It's just science. That room, let me give it to you straight. If you don't have ice in your veins, don't go to that room. Even with ice in your veins, you might wish to stay away from this room. I'll just level with you on that one. There's a, a more than modest degree of spice involved with this, but these guys are not particularly quick. Can I say a big shout out to Sad Onion? Without Sad Onion, <laughs> we would, uh, I mean, even with Sad Onion, we're only at 9 rate of fire. We're not exactly crushing it in that department, but, I mean, it could be worse. We could be at, you know, 15, maybe, is where we'd be. I don't think we really want to go hard on the TNT there, and uh, also pick up the fly that explodes everything, including yourself. I think we want to play it a little cooler here. We're gonna, you know it's a little spiced when I'm taking the time to shoot the fires. Love to roll... A D100. Hope we get a natural 100. Get a spirit heart out of it. I mean, it's not... Good work, good work. That you got in and out as quickly as you needed there. It's not that scary of a situation. Now, it doesn't get any scarier. But it's not that scary. You know, there's not... This stage of the game, not too many enemies that'll kill us in one hit. Might as well try to... That's gonna be a little low, I think. Never mind, just... Uh, Rolling that D100 once more. Hmm. Probably I think it's a bad idea to step on that, kill ourselves, and lose the entire streak. Not a not a high priority play. We're gonna we're just shoveling the banter. Sequestering the banter. We're quarantining the banter and just waiting. Just wait until we get a single spirit heart. And then the banter engines can fire once more. It's like Frostpunk. You know, we're in a dire circumstance, you gotta start eating soup. Does raise our lowest stat. <laughs> Which in this case is damage. <laughs> I wanna give us a spirit art, that's right, okay, we're rolling. I always, don't get me wrong, I, I, I mean, in hindsight, I can't really say it, you know, in foresight, obviously, but in hindsight, Frostpunk is probably one of my favorite games of 2018, and certainly, um, one of my favorite games that I've played so far in 2020. I think we got one, maybe. I always thought... It was, I, I get why, I guess. You know, I mean, it's just... Games are just abstracted, you know, experiences, right? So, you know, it's not that people in real life... I, I, and I, I'm doing a bad job of explaining this, but... I oftentimes find myself taking this position. Let me think about this for a sec. Let me think about this for a sec. Okay, let's go. I was gonna say, the one time you don't really want a, uh, a black market. Okay, pop, pop this first. Vercano. Perthro, Hagalaz, Alges. I'm gonna take Perthro, but... Something to be said about Hagalaz and, of course, Alges. We should use Perthro on this floor. But, you know, sometimes... And I think people are guilty of this, not just in uh, movies, but in video, or ju not just in video games, but in movies as well. But in movies, it almost makes more sense because some movies are, I wouldn't say intended to be, uh, you know, simulations of real life, but some of them are like, you know, they they ask you to submit that this could indeed have taken place in a real life context. I don't think we take it. I think we do, and I'm happy with the reroll, honestly. But in video games, sometimes people will be like, you know, like me. <laughs> it might be like, why do people have a debuff from soup? I love eating soup. Why would they have a debuff? It doesn't make any sense to me. But, you know, it's not really that they need a debuff. You know, they, they would, don't want to accurately model soup in the game. What they want to do is add something that, you know, raises one attribute while lowering another. So you, you trade your happiness. Uh, or your hope, I should say. And you get some more food rations out of it. It's important to remember it, you know? I, you can't, uh... We should be okay here, by the way. You can't pull the realism card on, on everything. On a, on a straight-up simulation, sure. 
Honestly, I think I'd, I'd rather have Bob's Rodden head. Now I wish I took Perthrow down here, but it is what it is. That hurts. I feel like, uh, and I don't think anything's changed except maybe my own observations, but... I feel like we've had an awful lot of golden chests coming out of Tinted Rocks lately. Life does indeed go on. That's okay. Like, one of the... Ooh, just pop it. One of the things that gets me is I, I really like this director, um, Yorgos Lanthimos, whose name I finally started pronouncing correctly. Um, he, he's a Greek director. He's done... His most famous work is definitely The Favorite with Rachel Weisz and uh, Emma Stone, uh, Olivia Colman. Those are the big names in that one. Um, help. But he also did the lobster and the, the killing of a sacred deer, both with Colin Farrell, who I always try to call Colin Farrell until my brain stops me. One of the number one criticisms in, in those movies, not so much the favorite, but definitely in the lobster and the, the killing of a sacred deer, uh, which admittedly I've only seen bits and pieces of, but I should see it because I just described him as one of my favorite directors. But... I love the lobster in the favorite enough, okay? Yo, that's a huge get. Um, but in, in the lobster, nobody talks like a human being. They all talk like weird robots. And the one criticism I've heard of people, or heard people levy, is like, well, nobody talks like that in real life, so how am I supposed to put myself in the shoes of being in the movie? It's like, it's unbelievable. Look, you could say they talk like a weirdo, so I didn't like the movie. That's fine. But the idea that, you know, the dialogue is unbelievable in a science fiction movie about being forced to find a partner uh, or you get turned into an animal of your choice is just a strange... It's, it strikes me as an argument that misses the point to some extent. You know, if the, if the dialogue and, it, and its unique nature... Ooh, baby. Serve the tone and the message of the movie, which is perhaps that, you know, we live in an overly sterile wor world to begin with. That's why everybody speaks to one another in purely objective sentences with no nuance behind them. Then then it's, uh, you know, it's an artistic decision. It's not like, well, he tried, he sucks at writing. <laughs> not that artistic decisions can't be bad, but you know what I mean. I'm just saying it's, I don't like it versus it's objectively bad is, is what I like. That's, that's my preferred method of criticism, at least. See what we got in here. Pyromaniac? Y'all, yeah, it's not bad. Will be better when we get more HP. Unfortunately, we, I, I was really hoping there would be like a seven cent item or alternatively a, uh, a five cent playing card that maybe could get us to the deal with the devil on the next floor. Because we really got a beat on this, this guppy dream right here. So many secret room locations, dude. Just uh, get me out of here. Here's a thought. Just let me get out of here. I like this run, though. Use the Alge's rune effectively. Use Perthrow effectively. Feeling pretty solid. Two-thirds of the guppy thing completed. Although we don't even have a deal with the devil precedent, which is weird enough. Pop it open. I was trying to think of what I would like the most out of these. We've already gotten two of the best head items. Steven would still be pretty good. Why isn't it called Steven's Head? You know? You got a little Steven. Then Steven himself doesn't even have a body. He's just a floating head. You know? Hey, look. This is the kind of... We don't need to talk about this. I don't know why I got off on that tangent. I'm not... I'm just not that interested in the... In the thematic uh, implications of Isaac, you know? Or the mechanical ones. Like yesterday, Sinvicta DM me. And he was like, Yo, dude. Do you know when you do a victory lap whether or not it takes an Eden token and or, or whether or not you get an Eden token maybe for finishing the floor I don't know um, I said I do not but in my head I was like man dude when was the last time I did a a victory lap <laughs> this is like 2017 maybe I don't know there goes my bone heart though um, Oh, we don't need a joker card. We got uh, goat head. That's right. We're, we're, we're sitting pretty. Even with that, that loss there. 
I was like, this guy, you gotta give it respect. That's a, I like Isaac a lot and I like playing it, but the game itself, I merely like at this point. Like merely very like. I'm not in love with it anymore, you know? At least until the DLC comes out. Simvita is like, he, it's his love. He's finding new things to appreciate about the game. You know, even four years since the last piece of meaningful content was added. The other thing I found hilarious is that apparently he asked Edmund about it. And Edmund said, I have no idea. Which I think is <laughs> very appropriate, considering how specific the question is to begin with. But, anyway. I don't know, I guess I never thought about it. Dude, I'm getting bodied on this floor. Okay, just don't... There's no need to even talk about panicking. You know, just... You got money, use it on the shop to keep yourself alive. You got a guaranteed deal with the devil. Um, and you got the HP to spend on it, if you can get a guppy item out of it, at least. Nine lives in particular would be pretty sweet. And if the going gets tough, you can always pyromaniac yourself. I'm realizing as well, like, it, what's been like my number one complaint on a couple of these runs? Low damage. What's the unifying theme of those runs? We're eaten. I think it's just something you gotta accept uh, as random. It happens, but it probably happens a little bit less. Because the characters are a little bit more balanced, honestly, and, and Eden, I hate to say it, sometimes you get overpowered starts, but I think in general Eden is balanced to be, um, maybe not a degree of magnitude weaker than she should be, but I, I think that she's, she's balanced, uh, too harshly, in my opinion. But that's just my two cents. Who knows, maybe it'll be ironic, maybe we'll go on a 700 game winning streak. And then I'll be like, ah, it's too easy. Okay, maybe don't just stand there and let them hit you. That that would probably be my first point of uh, criticism for myself here. Turns out there is one more unifying element between all these runs. Me making uh, not so amazing mistakes. And then also low speed. Just throwing that one in there to keep it honest. Ooh, baby! That is what you like to see. Might as well grab this. And if you don't mind, just don't hit me on the spikes is my... It's my only ask. You gotta admit, pretty sneaky, sis. <laughs> that was a solid play. To get the golden bomb, now I'm like, ah, I'm not even worried that my uh, DPS is kind of down in the dumps. Instead, we'll just press the E button on every single room we go into shouldn't be too bad <laughs> oh my god that was that was a deluge um i don't think it's worth buying the coupon to save 15 cents you know what i mean try this yeah i mean it could come in handy sure i mean blank card is is better than guppy's head i hate to get rid of it but it is it's the right play I'm gonna miss the offense, but hopefully we'll find something even better to replace it with. Where did we get all this freaking money, dude? This is incredible. I'm having a wonderful run here. You are the worst! <laughs> How dare you? That's okay. We got the 15 cents again. I don't really want any of that. Eh, I can live with this, but... Alright. This would be an amazing floor for a deal with the devil or angel. And you're, you're gonna think this is a big ask, but here's, I've learned, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Sometimes you ask for something, you think it's pie in the sky, there's no way you're gonna get it, and you get it. What if you gave me either a guppy item, and this is gonna burn me up, because we're gonna, oh no, we're not gonna see both, we're only gonna see one, never mind. Not, no burning up, no Shawn Mendes happening here. Or is that, no, it's the Jonas Brothers. I know, confusing Sean Mendez and the Jonas Brothers. How could I possibly do that? Well, I'll give you one reason why. I'm 31. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't want to be broke when I'm 31. They say the best classes go to the fastest, etc., etc. 
But the Jonas Brothers... Wait a minute, Shawn Mendes is the hottest new-ish singer-songwriter on the planet, also Canadian. The Jonas Brothers are old and busted now, right? They're not 13 anymore. I thought, I, I, I know, and this is, you're gonna have to let me finish the point here, which is gonna necessitate finishing this deal with the devil first, because I want to apologize to the Jonas Brothers, with whom I have no quarrel. I mean, the soul is very, very good. Um, one of the best... I, I think this is legitimate. One of the best measures or markers for how you can tell if you're starting to get a little bit older is when a band you hated when you were younger because they were popular with the younger demographic comes out with their, like, reunion and you're like, hey, wait a minute. These guys ain't all that bad. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Like the Jonas Brothers are a good one. They're going through it right now. They go, I'm a sucker for you. And I'm like, hey, this song, you know, it's not like it rocks. It's not going hard, you know. It's no Mark Rebier. But uh, I'm like, it's catchy enough. It's good for laundry soap commercials and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. When the Jonas Brothers were first around, I was like, it's teeny bopper garbage. Also recently-ish, I'm happy for the speed here at least, but I did want to go to the boss trap room, um, happened with One Direction, where when they were actually, you know, at the height of their popularity, it was like, it's just for, it's just music for teenagers, I don't like it at all. And then I was at karaoke one night, you know, like three years ago, and they sang a One Direction song there, and I was like, yo, this is pretty good. Story of my life, take her home. You know. Again, I wasn't like, this is the greatest song of all time, but I was like, I can see what people are talking about here. wonder when it'll happen next. I'm trying to think of... Uh, I mean, who are like the most popular artists in the world right now? Obviously, like, Taylor Swift. Following that, um... Dan Deacon. That was a joke. Who doesn't like Dan Deacon, though? Gotta get this up there, home. Gotta get that home there. Do you know? You know Dan Deacon, Wham City? He's come out with a lot of stuff since then, but, you know, I'm kind of permanently locked in that, like, 2006 to 2010 corridor. I'm always surprised. It's like, people think I have... Uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's such a thing as good taste and bad taste, right? Um, necessarily, on an empirical level. But Peter, I'm always surprised when, you know, I, I talk about, like, some of the music I listen to. And then I talk about some of the music I like. And people are like, wow, NL actually has really good taste. And I'm like, yeah, I know. You think it's hard? You just read the right blogs watch the right YouTubers, dummy. It's the easiest thing in the world. Wow, he likes neutral milk hotels into the aeroplane over the sea. And then people, whenever you say something like that... Uh, they hit you with like, oh wow, what a, what a slash MU core list. Like, I get it, it's from 4chan. Freaking, this, that's not from Moo, dude, this is from freaking Pitchfork. Where do you think, where do you think Moo got it from in the first place? That's, this is old Pitchfork core. Just been circling around for 10 years. I see it now. I, you know, because, uh, we look exactly the same, according to people with no eyeballs. Sometimes I see tweets meant for Anthony Fantano, and they go like, Hey, rate my favorite albums of all time. It's like the same favorite albums that every cool kid, myself included, had when we were 16. Except now there's like four new albums on it, you know? There's like a Death Grips album. I'm not cynical about it, you know? It's, it's, they're good albums. It was like, my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy is on all of them now. That wasn't around when I was a teenager, but apart from that, so yeah, I know. Oh, wow, you like Hail of the Thief as well? That's crazy, dude. Who, who would have thought your top 25 albums of all time has nine Radiohead albums on it? Anyway. That's not cynicism, if anything. You know, it's, uh, it keeps us together. Like the opposite of a Joy Division song. You almost got me there. We need this deal with the devil, dude. 
We, we need the damage now. I'll take a deal with the angel that gives us damage too. And don't get me wrong, like I said, I'm very happy actually to have the soul. But yeah, you you might think you're getting older when you're like, F, the kids are listening to something that I'm not listening to anymore. You're really starting to get up there when that band comes back around for, you know, their reunion tour. And you go, wait a minute, these guys ain't all bad. I remember it happened to my, uh, my mom and my uncle. I was watching Much Music, which is our version of MTV. <laughs> it's named differently here. <laughs> Um, and a new Hanson song came on, like, four years after Mbop came out, and it was a little bit more, like, moody, and a little bit more, like, folky, almost, like a little acoustic guitar accoutrement was involved, and they were both like, whoa, I never thought I'd say this, but Hanson, this song's pretty good. Now, me, as a 13-year-old, I knew everything, and I was like, actually, this song sucks. What actually rules is Papa Roach. Dummy. You'll get there too, God willing. Okay, my God, we're finally done with this room. Okay, a deal with the devil where I honestly, I'll take anything. That's good, it's a very good choice, thank you. Still a little light on DPS, but you know. The idea is that Goathead will work out for us, you know, in that department in the future. Look, you can make fun of Canadian MTV for being called Much Music. I make fun of American M Much Music for being called MTV when there's no M on the TV anymore. It's a bit of an old take, but it's, you know, it's the honest to goodness truth. <laughs> I forget, actually, you know what? I do get MTV. I know I get MTV because when my parents were here last time, I was scrolling through the channels and Tosh.0 was on like a nine hour marathon on, M on uh, Much Music. Or maybe it was MTV, I can't remember now. I, they play the same stuff. Look, I'm not trying to be the superior over this crappy premium cable channel. Um, we should have kept AWAS probably over the No, we shouldn't have, we're geniuses. And my, I was trying to scroll. You ever do this move on TV? You try to scroll fast enough that the person who obviously would like watching the show doesn't see it so you don't have to watch it rather than just having a conversation with them like a normal person. Um, but I failed, unfortunately. So my, my dad went, yo, Tosh.0, oh, let's watch some of that. I said, okay. And then he was like, you like this show? And I was like, yeah, he's okay. <laughs> and I, I don't really, I don't hate the show necessarily, but... Especially some of the episodes that are older, I'm just like, oh man. It's from a different era of, like, extreme edgelord culture for sure. But I love, I, I hate to say it, I love watching videos, viral videos of people getting hurt. Not maliciously, but due to their own hubris. Okay, these are both pretty good for us right now, and they work together, which is nice. But, uh, when I went to it, I was like... I don't think we get this channel. And then it was like, surprise, you bought it. <laughs> you, you've owned it for years, apparently. And uh, now every time Tosh.0 is on, your TV will send you a push notification that says, hey, Tosh is on. Do you want to watch it? It's uh, the newest episodes from 2013. So this run is very, very powerful, but just a little a stinky. Uh, too small. So if the steering wheel goes flying out to the window, I'm toss. So what's the game plan? Well, it's just, you know, go to the item room in the shop, get an aggregate uh, selection of items that inevitably allow us to have a chance at victory. I don't want to be perceived as complaining about every run, but it really, like, I mean, I just hit you with the brass tacks, you know? We've been on this run for 22 minutes, and we're still one floor away from boss rush. Which is capped at 20 minutes. That's kind of my indicator of a run being slow. And usually a slow run is not due to speed. It's due to... Uh, it's due to your ability to clear rooms. This is a very long floor as well. It's a longish floor. The good news is, and this is, a, this is a big positive. Once we get down to the womb, every time we get a space bar charge, the, the, the floor is over. 
And we're getting deals with the devil on every single one. Now the bad news is one of the deals with the devil is very, very likely to be Krampus. Krampus gobbles your points and he gets very mad. So let's see what we got going on here. I don't think there is legitimately, I don't think there's a better card for us. I think the Emperor is the best. Okay, well there's a few better items than Brother Bobby, but that's okay. Look, the gang's all here, dude. They still releasing characters for Smash? I know uh, Bergenworth just came out. I, I saw a Smash tier list uh, the other day. It was like unrecognizable to me. Like actually legitimately all of my favorite characters. I, I didn't see Inkling. But all of my favorite characters from like a year and a half ago are down in the bottom tier. And then the top tier is exclusively uh, Star Fox and anime characters with swords. I'm not mad, I'm just like... Donkey Kong. Isabel. Captain Falcon. They're, they're all down there at the, the very bottom. Even Pichu is not... Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't like playing Pichu to begin with, but even Pichu was like way down there. What, what happened, dude? What's wrong, Pichu? I thought you was keeping it S tier. I thought that's what you wanted. They say if you're nerfed, get good. But remember, they know the meta too. Now baby, when I get ya, get ya, get ya, get ya. I'm a up tilt into forward throw. Do a quick roll frame, cancel wave dash and spike you. <laughs> That's good, but it's it, it shouldn't have been. Shouldn't have existed, but it is good. That's great execution on a, on a pretty bad joke. Which is... On brands. Ah yes, the Kendrick Lamar. But not the most recent album, the one from five years ago. Reference. Plus uh, Super Smash Brothers. Where I know just enough to say something that sounds meaningful to people who don't play the game. But if you play the game, you're like, what is he talking about? He thinks he could keep a combo going after he throws in a roll. <laughs> I would just cancel out. Baby, when I'm riding, yeah, I'm riding dirty. Okay, let's finally kick this run into high gear. It's safe, it's stable. It's a 40 hour job with benefits. I don't want it! I'm quitting to become professional bite superstar. Six seconds is all I need to get the world clapping. Yes, I have bite. Haven't really put too much on it, because, I mean, six seconds is not a lot of time. It's, it's hard to build a bit in six seconds. I know I've said this, this exact permutation of words before. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll go on bite and just be like, what's up? And it's almost exclusively... Just, I mean, what do, what do you expect a six-second joke is like? There's a lot of people getting hit in the nuts. Nothing wrong with it. I like it. We're not going to lose this, so hold on. Try this out. Yes, that's very nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then, uh, honestly, just use Blank Rune. See what you get. Nothing special. Then we head down to the next floor. Okay, so the Guppy Dream is going to make this... Very chef's kiss. This is going to be under control. Might as well crack these. A couple of them, at least. I don't really want to lose an empty vessel. But then again, we're going to be okay. Um, because we can just swap it at the deal with the devil on the next floor. Unless the deal with the devil doesn't give us an engine uh, with which to generate a deal like that. Like, it could just be red chests, for example. This one isn't, though. Guppy's paw. <laughs> Ceremonial robes. It's a bit of a risk to take it, but but honestly, I don't think it's as much of a risk as you might be believing, you know, the, before we did it. That's my two cents, at least. I feel like we're pretty much locked in. So I'm thinking we'll do a couple of rooms. That's fair. You, uh, you caught me sleeping, honestly. Our speed is still a little bit on the slow side. 
Got to be a little bit better with my positioning. We'll fight uh, one of these enemies, and then we'll teleport out. Honestly, Blind Rage is probably more valuable than anything else right here. And then, all we want to see is a deal with the devil that's not Krampus. If it's Krampus, that's fine. Like, we're actually, everything's completely okay, but not Krampus would be the ideal. But this is, like, probably the most traditionally powerful run that we've had in a long, long time. One of the very few times, actually, lately, that I've been, like, a run that we're having is unlosable this late. Oftentimes, I go, like, this run's unlosable, and then, you know, when I get to the chest, I'm like, well, <laughs> I didn't lose, but it kind of came close for a bit there. This one, we're holding it together quite nicely. So I'm not sure if you're aware of the, the protocol here. I'm thinking I'll do a couple of rooms, press the space bar, fight the boss, press the... Uh, Q button, which is also known as a key on the keyboard, which is why they call it that in the first place. And then we'll probably be done with this run. Do not pick that up. I totally forgot we also have uh, Pyromaniac. Like, we got a lot of really good runs here, or really good items. Goadhead, especially, was like. Took us a while to really make it pop, but once we popped, the fun don't stop. I can't remember, like, the last time we became Guppy. It's, I mean, much like when people are like, I can't remember the last time I had, last fo uh, had fast food. I don't know if I said a complete sentence there. Let me rephrase. Much like when people are like... I can't remember the last time I had fast food, and then when they really think about it, they're like, Oh, last Tuesday. It was probably within the past two weeks. <laughs> but I'm not certain. It, that's, that's a relatively long time for Isaac. I feel like hopefully this is the, the dawning of the age of Guppy. I can get down with that. And if, we're finally settling in a little bit after a lot of runs that were just not really that good for me. Due to maybe my own fault, I'll admit. Um, and these items, speaking of not really good for me, um, we're gonna take Dead Sea Scrolls at least, and I, I think it was Kamikaze. Well, see you later. <laughs> not a not a huge get on that one. Didn't hurt us though. That's what I want out of a space bar item. When we press the space bar once every two rooms, it does nothing effective. But does not hurt us. It's just fun to press the key. Alright, so we're... Slacking a little bit on shooting... Uh, little Bumbo Jr. in there. I don't know. Bumbo, Gertie, Gimpy, Turdy. There's so many different E's in this game. It's hard to keep them straight. I feel like I'm naming my grandkids wrong. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. See ya!